This all started around six months ago when I moved into my new apartment. It's my first time living alone, and I was thrilled about the independence. The building is old, creaky, but it has character, you know? Plus, it's in a great location, close to work, and most of my friends. For the first couple of weeks, everything was normal. I settled into a routine quickly, juggling work and some social activities. It wasn't until maybe three weeks in that I noticed something odd. Every time I came home from work, I found my doormat slightly moved from its usual spot. It was subtle, but noticeable. At first I brushed it off, thinking maybe it was the janitor sweeping the hallways. But it kept happening, almost daily. Then the tapping started. It was faint, coming from the wall that I share with the next apartment. At first it was just a nuisance, but then it became rhythmic, always around the time I'd go to bed, tap, tap, tap. Three taps, pause, then three taps again like clockwork. One night, curious and slightly irritated, I knocked back. Silence followed, no response. I tried to convince myself that I was overreacting. Maybe my neighbor just had some weird habits. But the feeling in my gut told me something was off. It escalated quickly from there. I started receiving notes under my door. They were simple at first, just, hello, or nice flowers on your balcony. But then they got more personal, saying things like, loved the red dress you wore yesterday. I was freaking out. How did they know what I was wearing? I never saw anyone watching me. I installed a peephole camera, desperate to catch a glimpse of whoever was doing this. For days, the camera showed nothing unusual. Then one evening while reviewing the footage, I saw it. Around 3 a.m., someone was standing at my door, just staring at it for what seemed like hours. The image was grainy and the hallway dimly lit, but it was unmistakably a tall, thin figure. I reported everything to the police. They took notes, asked questions, and said they'd patrol the area more frequently. Meanwhile, I reached out to my landlord, asking about the neighbor next to me. He seemed surprised and told me that the apartment had been vacant for months. That night I couldn't sleep. My mind raced with thoughts of who could be stalking me and why. The vacant apartment next door, could they have been hiding there? I decided to check it out the next day. In the daylight, I felt braver. I knocked on the door of the supposed vacant apartment. No answer. I pressed my ear against it, listening for any sound. Silence. With a deep breath, I tried the doorknob. Unlocked. My heart was pounding as I pushed the door open and peeked inside. The apartment was mostly empty, dust covering the floor except for one corner. There I found a makeshift nest of sorts. Blankets, some of my missing clothes, and photographs. Photographs of me taken from distances some even through my window. I nearly threw up right there. I ran back to my apartment and called the police again, showing them everything. They searched the place and started a full investigation. Turns out my stalker was someone who had access to the building. Another tenant living just a floor below me. They'd been sneaking into the vacant apartment through a maintenance hatch that wasn't properly secured. The police arrested him later that day. He confessed to everything, claiming a twisted love and obsession. I was lucky, they told me, that it hadn't escalated further. But I don't feel lucky. Even now, in a new apartment, with better security, I jump at every sound, every tap, every creak. It reminds me of those nights. I'm sharing this because I learned something crucial. Always trust your gut. If something feels off, it probably is. Stay safe out there. It all began when I started my new job in Madrid. I was excited. New beginnings. A fresh start away from the small town I grew up in. My apartment was on the 12th floor of a high-rise, 
with a nice view of the downtown skyline. It felt like a dream, but the dream didn't last long. One evening, about a month after I moved in, I came home to find a small gift wrapped in plain brown paper right outside my door. There was no note, no indication of who it might be from. Inside was a simple silver bracelet, pretty but generic. I asked around, but none of my neighbors claimed it, and my friends and family all denied sending it. I chalked it up to a mix-up, or perhaps a secret admirer making a harmless gesture. But then, more gifts started appearing. A book I mentioned wanting to read on social media, a scarf in my favorite color, a box of my preferred chocolates. Each gift was more personalized than the last. It was clear someone was paying close attention to my likes and habits. It went from flattering to frightening rapidly. I started noticing other things too. I'd come home to find things slightly out of place. My curtains drawn when I left them open, my pillows on the couch rearranged. It was subtle enough to make me question my own memory, but consistent enough to unsettle me. I decided to involve the building management. They reviewed security footage at my request, but nothing unusual turned up. Whoever was doing this knew how to avoid being caught on camera, which only added to my anxiety. One night, I came home late from work, exhausted and just ready to crash. As I approached my door, I noticed it was slightly ajar. My heart sank. I knew I had locked it. I always double-checked. I called the police before I even thought to go inside. When the police arrived, we entered together. At first glance, nothing seemed amiss. But then I went into my bedroom. On my bed was a photo album, open to a collage of photos of me. Photos taken over the last several weeks, some from angles only possible from another building. I felt sick. The police increased patrols in the area and suggested I stay with a friend for a few days. I took their advice and stayed with a colleague. During this time, the police managed to trace a few of the photos to a tenant in the building directly opposite mine. He had a clear line of sight to my apartment. When they searched his apartment, they found hundreds of photos and several of his own notes detailing my daily routines. It was horrifying to see how meticulously he'd been observing me. He was arrested and I was granted a restraining order. Even with him behind bars, the sense of violation and fear hasn't fully left me. I've moved again, this time to a more secure building with stricter access controls. But I still find myself double-checking locks. It all started a few months ago when I kept noticing the same guy hanging around places I went. At first I just brushed it off thinking it was a coincidence, but it kept happening over and over. I'd be at the grocery store and see him a few aisles down, or I'd be at the gym and spot him on a machine across the room. One time I was at the mall with my friend Amanda and I saw the guy loitering near the food court, just watching people go by. I pointed him out to Amanda and she got this really creeped out look on her face. Jess, that's the third or fourth time I've seen that same sketchy dude around when we're out together. This can't be a coincidence anymore. I tried to rationalize it, saying maybe he just lived in the area and we overlapped at a lot of the same places. But deep down I knew something was off. The way he always seemed to be watching me with this really intense look on his face. It made my skin crawl. Things started to escalate after that. I'd be out running errands and I'd see his beat up old sedan slowly driving past me then circling the block. Once I was walking home from work at night and I caught him quickly ducking behind a parked car up ahead when he saw me coming. I started getting paranoid and looking over my shoulder constantly whenever I went out. I tried different routes to throw him off, but he always seemed to show up eventually, blending into the crowd but keeping me in his sights. My hands would literally start shaking if I spotted him. Then the letters started coming. The first one just said, I'm watching you. Written in cut-out magazine letters, no return address. 
I freaked out and called the police, but there was nothing they could really do besides telling me to keep all the letters. Over the next few weeks, more letters arrived. Always the same cutout letters. Sometimes a few sentences long talking about how he'd been admiring me from afar and couldn't stay away any longer. Calling me his perfect angel. It made me want to vomit. I started having panic attacks if I heard any strange noises at night, fearing he was going to try breaking in. I installed an intense alarm system and new locks. Amanda stayed over a lot of nights to keep me company since I was too terrified to be alone. One night we were cooking dinner and there was a loud thump on the patio door that made us both scream. We ran to the living room and saw the guy's face pressed against the glass, staring at us before he turned and ran off into the darkness of the backyard. That's when I contacted a lawyer and started getting an order of protection in place. As we gathered evidence for the police report, more letters kept arriving. One said, You think some stupid piece of paper is going to stop me from being with you? I'd burn this whole world down before giving you up. I didn't sleep for weeks after that. The thought of this psycho being out there, obsessing over me, escalating his behavior, I lived in constant fear of what he might try next. Nobody should ever have to feel that way. The police still haven't caught him. Sometimes months will go by without any sign of him, and I'll start feeling relieved and think maybe he finally moved on. But then I'll spot that car behind me in traffic or get another creepy letter, and the nightmare starts all over again. I'm too afraid to leave my apartment most days, too afraid to go to work, to see friends, to live anything even close to a normal life. My story starts when I moved back to my hometown after several years away. I found a charming little house on the edge of town, surrounded by woods. It was quiet, peaceful, the perfect place for me to focus on my writing and reconnect with nature. Everything was serene for the first few weeks. I spent my days writing and exploring the wooded paths nearby. However, one morning I noticed something odd. A set of footprints in the dewy grass leading up to my back window. I thought maybe a neighbor was trying to say hi. But the thought was quickly dismissed as the next few days revealed more signs of someone lingering around my house at night. It started with noises rustling and soft thuds coming from outside late in the evenings. I would look out the windows, flashlight in hand, but the beam never caught anything but the dense trees swaying in the wind. My nerves started to fray, and my peaceful retreat began to feel more like a cage. Then, one evening, as I was locking up for the night, I found a note stuck in my door. It was crudely written, saying, Nice to have you back. No name. No other clues. Chills ran down my spine. Who was watching me? How did they know about me returning? The police were sympathetic, but explained that without more to go on, there wasn't much they could do. I installed motion sensors and cameras the next day. That night, the sensors tripped multiple times, but the cameras only showed the swaying branches and an occasional night creature. Nothing human. The turning point came a week later. I was woken in the middle of the night by the sound of my back door gently closing. Terrified, I called the police and locked myself in the bathroom. When the police arrived, they found muddy footprints inside my kitchen leading back out into the woods. Someone had been inside my house. The investigation intensified and the police managed to collect enough evidence from the footprints and a forgotten flashlight to identify a suspect, a man who lived a few miles away, known in the community but not well liked, with a history of minor offenses. Thank you for watching. If you found these stories gripping, don't forget to subscribe for more spine tingling content. For another hair-raising tale, check out our suggested video. 
And if you're hungry for more eerie encounters, dive into our playlist featuring similar chilling narratives.